let us learn about what are zeros of any polynomial zeros of a polynomial now we have seen a lot of polynomials an example of a polynomial is something like this 5x minus 10 and we name polynomials as p of x f of x etc so p of x is 5x minus 10 let's say another polynomial f of x is x square minus 9x and what we are interested in are the zeros of these polynomials so what are zeros really zeros basically means some numbers that make the given polynomial zero we know that x is a variable in both of these polynomials p of x naturally means it's a polynomial in variable x f of x means that f is a polynomial in x if we wrote something like g of y this would mean this is a polynomial in y so we could write y minus 2 i am just considering very simple examples of polynomials of course there could be many more terms in a polynomial but just for the simplicity to understand the concept of zeros i am considering binomials in this case now what we want is to find such numbers which make these polynomials equal to zero where would we use those numbers we will use these numbers in place of the variable given so this variable y or x takes up any values that we put in and it gives us certain value of the polynomial for now we will just consider polynomials in x and the variable here would be x so we will put x equal to something and then we will find the value of p of x or f of x and we will check whether it gives zero and if for certain value of x the polynomials return zero or the output is zero we will call that value for x as zero of the polynomial so let us consider p of x so p of x again is 5x minus 10 now what we are going to do is to use trial and error because we don't really know for which values of x would this be 0 x could take many values such as 0 1 minus 1 2 minus 2 etc it could it, it could be anything and there are infinite numbers we cannot keep on testing but there are ways in which we can find zeros of polynomials which we will learn later but in this case we will just use trial and error so let us start with x equal to 0 so what if we put x equal to 0 if we put x equal to 0 here p of x equal to 0 then becomes 5 times 0 minus 10 and this gives me 0 minus 10 or minus 10 so this is definitely is not returning 0 let us use x equal to 1 so if i put x equal to 1 then i have 5 times 1 minus 10 and this gives me 5 minus 10 which is minus 5 still not 0 what about x equal to 2 5 times 2 minus 10 this gives me 10 minus 10 and that is 0 and we have got something that we wanted after three tries which is lucky i guess but x equal to 2 then can be called as a zero of the polynomial p of x now i just want you to focus on this part let's just forget everything else so i'll just delete everything so we have got something in place of x which makes the given polynomial p of x equal to 0 so can we say x equal to 2 is a zero of polynomial p of x yes we can and that is our objective now what is the point of doing all this this is a very natural question that will come to your mind i am just going to assure you that even though you are studying this now applications of zeros of polynomials is huge in engineering and i'll just give you a context the engineering inventions such as aeroplane or computers or satellites have huge huge applications of finding zeros of polynomials and we are learning very small polynomials we are just looking at a binomial but when you go into complicated fields and complicated math such as engineering you have to deal with large polynomials and then the applications of zeros is huge so just trust that this concept is very important if you want to choose engineering or probably fields which use the applications of engineering of course i am an engineer that's why i'm saying this there are again many different applications of this but just trust me on this so if we are clear with the point of finding zeros let's just also find zero of x square minus 9x now can you guess we i don't really want to go into trial and error for this can you guess what would be the x value that will make the given polynomial equal to zero just try and guess now note this we have x in both terms what if we just put x equal to 0 if we put x equal to 0 this will be 0 square minus 9 times 0 
both the terms will be zero. So if x appears in all the terms, x equal to zero is itself a zero of the polynomial, right? Zero of the polynomial. Somehow I didn't get the space, but and I just instead write instead of polynomial, I can just write zero of f of x, right? That'll be that'll be very convenient for us. So x equal to zero is itself zero of f of x. Now, are there any other zeros of this polynomial? Zero is definitely a zero, and that was very easy for us to find out. Can we just use trial and error again? Now, we cannot keep on doing trial and error, but in this case, because we don't know any other methods, by using trial and error, we could put so many values in here, x equal to one, two, three, even minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on. But because I have done this before creating this video, I know that x equal to nine is a zero of this polynomial. So let's check. So f of x equal to nine, that makes the polynomial as nine square because x equal to nine minus nine times nine, and that gives me eighty one minus eighty one, and that makes the given polynomial equal to zero. And so x equal to nine is a zero of the polynomial f of x. Now, did we notice something for the first polynomial? X equal to two was a zero. And in here, x equal to zero and x equal to nine, both are zeros of f of x. Now, number of zeros of a given polynomial depend upon the degree of the polynomial. Remember that here the degree is one, and here the degree is two. So this is again an interesting result that you need to remember because the degree is two here. We should ideally be getting two zeros. Now, like I said, because we haven't learned a lot of other methods to find out zeros. One method that we will learn soon is factorization of polynomials, which allows us to break down polynomials like these, and then we don't really have to use trial and error to find out zeros. This can be written as x times x minus nine. Once we take out x common, and by writing any polynomial in terms of the multiplication of two things like x and x minus nine, allows us to find out zeros. Once we like equate it to zero. If the multiplication of two things is zero, that means either one of it or both of them could be zero, and then that allows us to confirm what are zeros: x equal to zero and x equal to nine. So factorization of polynomials holds an important role in mathematics as well, which we will learn soon.